This is the third year of doing the course, and we uh, spend four days out in the backcountry, and we camp out um, a little ways below the terminus of the glacier. So it is a bit challenging to hike into these glaciers. We go off trail. You know, you do have to carry a overnight backpacking pack and weigh anywhere between 35 and 50 pounds, depending on how much gear you uh, want to carry. It takes a full day to get out there and a full day to get back. It, it's definitely not an easy trip. Uh, it's through bushes and boulder fields and rocks and rivers and uh, you never quite know what to expect. It was pretty intimidating in my, in my mind, uh, thinking about setting up tents in what could have been like 40 mile per hour winds, 45 mile per hour winds. Like, oh, all right, this is what we're doing. There's no turning around. It's a more active way to hike. It's not a, you know, not just passively following the trail. I think it's really cool. I mean, you just sort of, you're more, for one thing, you're more aware of your surroundings because you're always picking your trail. You're always trying to find the best path. And if you're with a group of people, the whole idea is that you're not just following the person in front of you. You need to be choosing your own path. Because there's no trail, there's no bridges, so I'll in several places we actually have to cross a stream like to get onto the glacier terminus we had to cross the terminal stream which was the water must be right at freezing. <laughs> I lost sensation in the lower part of my body for <laughs> upwards of three or four minutes. Getting up on the glacier we did need to put crampons on to walk around on the ice so we wouldn't slip. The glacier was cool, and you know, even from a distance, you see the intense, like, blue, especially with, with the subdued lighting, you know, the, the blue on the glaciers. It's pretty cool, but going through the contours, you know, it's, it's such a unique space, and to be up and, and to climb higher on it, um, knowing what is underneath your feet, and knowing the age and the time and the process that went through creating what's underneath your feet, I think it's pretty fascinating. It was raw and intimidating. Uh, there are a lot of aspects to it that I uh, hadn't really thought about. And, uh, it's a, a place that you can just visit for short periods, you kind of, you kind of bar that time, and it seems like the uh, glacier has the final word. Just getting onto the glacier for the first time, I mean, I was on the glacier for a few minutes and I just said, you know, this was worth the price of admission. This was worth the, the walk in. So the, the main goal of the trip was to get a uh, profile of the elevation change of the glacier. So we took um, high resolution GPSs and took uh, several thousand points of the glacier surface to see how much elevation change there was um, since the last time it was measured. What it turns out to be here is how is much ice loss, how much volume loss of the glacier is occurring because of, of climate change. And um, unfortunately, all our measurements have been you know, negative in that we are measuring volume loss and retreat of the glaciers. There are hundreds of glaciers um, in Denali National Park and Preserve, so this is a really small sample. And these are some of the more sensitive glaciers because they're at lower elevations. So these are the glaciers where you're seeing the most dramatic ice loss due to climate change. But even, even on the high cold mountain, even those glaciers are losing mass. This year has been a great opportunity to reflect on wilderness given the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act. So I think it's important to protect this place not only for our benefit, for people's benefit, but it's maybe even more important to preserve these places just for their own intrinsic value, just for their own sake. These are places that have existed without significant human manipulation for millions of years. And so to protect these places, you know, as the home of the animals and plants that live here, um, of the mountains and the glaciers and their own value I think is, is really important. 
I think it's important to have wilderness like Denali because it's one of the few places that you can go out and feel what it was like before humans came here and try to get a sense of how grand the great outdoors really is. To get out here in the wilderness, you do kind of need to earn it. Modern, I know modern living is often all about what's the easiest way to do something, but but I don't think that includes getting in the wilderness. I, I think you kind of have to earn it to get here and, and just have the lowest impact you can.